you've watched the show before, you know these are colors I, you know, I'm not mis- <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here comes a good one. <laughs> the unexpected in the shadows. I like to put, actually I like to put unexpected things everywhere. I don't know, you ever remember being a kid and uh, playing with shadows on the wall and doing little birds? <laughs> Hi, welcome to Give Your Walls Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom. Well, normally, uh, the first part of the show, we talk about the painting that we did last time. But I have to tell you, it's at the dump. I threw it out. <laughs> I could have played with it and uh, taken it to another level, but it just made me tired, so I threw it out. And <laughs> I'm going to start a new one. Um, one of the cameramen said he's going to take a camera to the dump and do some outtakes of all, all the stuff that I throw out. But uh, you know what? It just had to go. Well, today we're going to do apricots. It's apricot season, and I was lucky to go out to uh, B&R Farms in Hollister and uh, shoot photos of tons and tons of apricots. And uh, God, it was a great experience. So I'm going to get started. All right. Well, there's lots of orange, lots of lots of happy colors, and it's the only the only thing I have to guard against when I paint apricots is that you know how much I love red and they and uh, a lot of people I was at the farmers market yesterday painting apricots and a lot of people went by and said sure love those peaches <laughs> and I didn't tell them they were apricots I just said thank you <laughs> so anyway I'm gonna get started I'm gonna take some weight and start with the lightest part first which is always dangerous because uh, you really can't see it on a light background but I'm gonna put in the lights And I think I'll mix three, primarily three colors first when we first get started, and then uh, I'll hit the canvas. So there's the light, and that's some cad yellow deep and white. And what do I want to do for a medium? I'll take some cad yellow deep, a little bit of red, cad red light, mix that. You know what, this lick one looks very precarious, so I'm going to move it over here. If you remember the last show, boy, the palette paper was all over the place. We've got it taped down, so hopefully it's going to cooperate this time. That's a nice medium, very bright. And then I want to make a good dark, so I'll take some more Cad yellow deep and add its complement, which would be carbazol violet. And that might be a little too much, but we'll see. I'm just going to keep mixing. Now, it does make a nice dark golden color. The only problem with this is that if you if you put this color down and you're painting fruit it looks like you've bru they're bruised <laughs> I don't want it to be looking bruised so I'm gonna add some red to it because you know red makes everything happy that's better so we still have a rich rich color and I can probably add a little more violet to that and it'll be all right That's good. I don't think I mixed nearly enough, but I'm going to put it down and just start playing with it. All right, so I'm going to put some lip, liquid in a cup or painting medium. And what am I going to start with? I'm going to start with the lights on this first and overstate them so that I don't lose them later. And you know what? I don't think that's light or bright enough, so I'm going to add a little yellow to that. 
All right, so where's the light? There's a big old fat blob right here. And another one here. Yep, I think this needs to stay here, otherwise I'm gonna have trouble with that. There's some more. I think we'll do one at a time. Otherwise, it'll be a little confusing. All right, and this top of this is light. And I'm going to take another brush and just kind of sketch where I'm going so I have an outline, don't lose my place. I'm looking for just a little scruffy brush to scruff, scrub with. And I'll use this medium color. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just draw the outline of this. Scrub in the pencil lines so that those don't show later. Now, yesterday I was out, there's a farmer's market in Hollister, and I was out there for doing a similar setup. And I was out there for four hours. And uh, so I thought, boy, it's going to be a little different painting the same type of thing in, in just one hour. This will definitely have some different, different energy in there. All right, so what else? There's, what else does this little apricot do? Well, they're not that little. Okay, so there's a little line here, and then there's some separation here. There. Okay, now it looks really, <laughs> really abstract. Looks like something the kids do, and um, but we're on the right, right track. Okay, so I'm starting to paint. Just getting ready to get into this. And I feel like I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Made it through 30 episodes without doing that. But it's, uh, I have to warn you, it might happen today. <laughs> a lot of pollen in the air. Okay, that's a nice little dark spot without being, uh... but you know what? It needs some more red. And I won't tell you the brand of palette paper, but you can email me, shannon at shannongrissom.com, and I can tell you what brand not to get uh, because I'm still having a problem again this episode, and I'm just going to have to switch paper for the next episode. Oh, that's a nice dark. And where else is there some dark? Not just on the plate. <laughs> Ah, oh, this reminds me of another episode. Not just on the place where the sun doesn't shine. There are, you have to look at <laughs> all different aspects and all different angles of this little apricot. There's some dark down here. A little more violet to that. But it's not that just one whole side of the apricot um, is dark. There are dark little areas. All right, so that, and, th and they're necessary in order for these things to look three-dimensional. It was great being out at the farmer's market because there were lots of children. I got to talk to them while I was painting. And uh, one little gal was concerned about what the color I was going to paint in the background. And, and um, she really didn't think I should use this lime green in the background. She said, I don't think you have enough color. You really, <laughs> she didn't want to tell me not to do it, but she said, I don't think you have enough. Maybe, maybe you should use something else. It was great to get their input because they're honest and they don't worry about, they just tell you what they feel. So it's good, good to get a nice little critique from them. And I'll bet you they went home and painted. Okay, now I'm gonna add a little bit of light. So I'm doing, this is like puzzle pieces, just spots of color. So you see there's a spot of dark here, a little bit lighter here. We're going to warm it up a little here. Well, I thought it was, but I better wipe my brush. Nothing's going to happen. It's too dirty. Okay. That's better. I remember being kids, there were orchards, I grew up in the Almaden Valley, and there were orchard apricots all around us. And uh, 
my friend's mom had made this, picked, we'd picked all these apricots and my friend's mom had made this apricot pie and she went out to the store or something and she came back and oh, my girlfriends and I, we ate the whole pie. Oh God, I was sick, but it was so good. Okay, so we got a little bit of light here. There has to be a little dark spot next to that. And that, you know, the, the temptation is to jump all over the place. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little more red because you can see in the reference photo that there's, there's just a lot of red in this apricot. Not just peaches that have a lot of red. I do need to put in this little dark line here or I'll lose that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right next to the light. And where else is there some dark right here? Because this will make this have a top. There's always that play against dark and light to make something look three-dimensional. And the two things that I that I value most in my painting, not in not they're all different sorts of things or different ways that people paint. But the things that I like to do the most are number one, use a lot of color creatively. And number two, make things look three-dimensional so that you can grab the object when I'm done. And basically, I don't stop until I've achieved that. So even if I don't get it done on the show, I play with it around until I go home, play with it till I get it the way I want it. Okay, that's not enough different. We'll come use some of this bright stuff. The bright mixture is nice. I think there needs to be a little bit lighter stuff going on. So I'm going to do something that's in between this one and this one. That's better. I don't want it to be too wimpy, though. So I had mixed cat yellow deep and some white. And that makes a little peachy color. And that's just too dead for me. So I'm going to add a little bit of this Indian yellow because that livens everything up. Indian yellow is like the life of a party of the yellows. Okay, so that, that might even be too, still too light. Let's just grab a whole bunch of Indian yellow. That's better. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I'm trying to do fairly big shapes, get the canvas covered, and then go back and see what I can play with and uh, to finish it off. This does get lighter there. And how far up does it go? Eh, pretty far up. And I can probably get, now we're going to go with two brushes <laughs> because um, I'm going to go back and forth between mixtures. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit more red here toward the top. Darken that just a little bit. Yeah, that's good. So am I seeing all this color in the, in the apricot? Yes. I'm not just making it up. And the more you look, the more you'll see. OK. What am I not seeing there? Should we grab some of this orange? I'm trying out a new. And I didn't put it on today's palette list because I just I wasn't sure if I was going to try it out or not. But it's a Paranone orange, and I'm going to see if what I think. If it's just a, and it might be just a little too much, especially for the dark side. We'll blend it in. And then a little bit lighter over here. So this shape goes light here, and the rest is dark. I'm just going to simplify.
still not looking like much, but that's because it takes a while to get to that point. It was really cool because the gal, uh, Mary from BNR Farms, was out there watching me paint. She had her booth at the farmer's market. She said, you know, you're out there for a long time before it actually turns into something. You know, you're painting for a while and it's just blobs and blobs and blobs and then all of a sudden, boom, there it is. So, um, and I like it when it gets to the boom part. That's fun. Okay, now we need some light stuff. And this whole side is light. I've got to keep this light. So, like that. Okay, I usually get a lot of music in my head when I'm painting, and right <laughs> now, all I can hear are the bare naked ladies. And <laughs> I wish there was some way to plug in what I'm hearing here so that you guys could, <laughs> so I could somehow just download that into you guys while, so you can get the total experience. Someday the technology will, will catch up. And for those of you that don't know, that's, that's, a, that's a musical group. I'm not talking literally about naked ladies, OK? OK. Just checking, just in case you've never heard of them. They're not even girls. OK, we won't go there. We'll go back to the apricots. Somebody asked me if I'm like this all the time. Kinda. Uh, how about how, except when I'm not. Oh, that's a nice, nice little color there. And we're going to have to add some more red because it's just been way too long since we did. And I, there's, I do see in the reference photo red on this side. And this needs to be red up there. We could even throw some magenta in there later when we start getting brave. And you gotta be brave to put some of this stuff down. Especially when you go, it's like anything else. You work really hard for a long time before you start to see results. Okay, this needs to be lighter in here. And I want this to be lighter here so we can get that three dimensional thing going. More orange. Let's go get some straight cad yellow deep. Start getting some screaming colors here. The nice thing about putting it on like this is if you know if it doesn't start working, I'm just gonna throw colors over the top. And that's good. For a little red. Okay. Yeah, that red is happy. Now the nice thing, and what I will do, this one I'll definitely bring back, and I may, I may just spend five minutes on it on the next episode. Because the cool thing that you can do once this stuff is dry is to glaze with some yellows and some reds, and that really makes the rich colors pop. OK, this needs to be darker down here. That works. And let's see, how far does the light go? I'm going to just make a little ridge all the way to the bottom here. Ooh, nice red. Okay. Now this is great because there, the, oh yeah, see that reference photo shows there's so much color there. 
And what's nice about what you're seeing is by the time I print it out, it loses some of the richness. So you're getting a really good version of the reference photo. OK, there's that. Maybe a little more, a little more orange. And I like that. Keep that white spot and that white whole blob is going to be important later. And I'll throw in some light over the top. OK, so now I step back and look at it. And it's not three-dimensional yet, but it's amazing. It won't take that much to get there. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take a stiff brush, do a bit of blending. And so first what I want to do is blend this area in here. And I wipe my brush after just about every stroke. So there's this nice, quiet transition. As much as I love the red, it is not allowed to take over. Because if it doesn't make sense or make anything work, it doesn't belong there, even if I like it. It's, it's, you can't fall in love with one piece of the, uh, you can't fall in love too early, which sometimes I do. And you can't fall in love with uh, just one piece and paint around it. It's got to be good for the whole of the painting, the group dynamic here. I suppose you could cut out a section and make a composition out of the one section that you like if you wanted to do that. OK, so that's starting to turn, starting to get some more depth. And I'm going to start to blend this side. And what I will have to do is add some more darks back in here in order for this to make sense. And I need more paper towel to wipe from. But it is starting to look three-dimensional. It's getting there. The reason I'm not doing like all the darks first and all the lights first is I want to be able, it's hot in here, I want to be able to blend before it gets too sticky. And if I did, if I did all the darks on each section first, it would be too uniform. It would start to get boring. I want some variation because no two, the apricots are like people, they, they don't all, none of them look the same. OK. I'm starting to like that. Now I am going to need to go reinstate that light color in order for that to work. I'm going to get a stiffer brush. Because to go over the paint that's already there, I'm going to need something that can hold up to. And I'm not using any medium this time either. So I'll put the light right here. And I will blend that out a little bit. OK, that's starting to get some dimension. You can start to see what's going on. You can see at the top of this, there's more definition than there is in the middle section. So I will blend that out a little. It's not as pronounced there. So it's interesting. I'm painting an apricot, but it's, a, you know, it's not just this one orange color in order to make it work. All right, I need to kind of clean up this edge here, this lighter edge. This is a good first statement. It's not perfect. It's not perfectly done, but it's starting to get some dimension. I'll go ahead and put in a little bit of the darks back in some of those places, and then I got to move on so that I can get this canvas covered. Because you guys know, I don't want to stay in one place too long and then get stuck. Don't want to do that to you. Because this is not going to be a three-parter or a four-parter. Or... This is it. Because when we're done with this, apricot season will be, they will have picked, and I'll be on to 
other things, <laughs> other subjects. All right, I'm getting some straight carbazole violet. Where do I see the darkest thing? Well, I'm going to just kind of cheat because it's not quite that dark here. Wow, this brush is really old, and the, I probably shouldn't use it because the, uh, the paint's peeling off the wood, and it's getting in my painting, and it's... Um, but I love the brush. <laughs> so I, I, need to, I need to let this thing go. I'm going to throw it away. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. No, I'll, I'll throw it away because otherwise I'm going to have stuff in the painting. That was not nice. I'll have to remember what brand that was because the, the outside, the bristles held up longer than the, than the brush did. All right, so now I'm grabbing some straight. I got distracted. I get distracted a lot, even when I'm by myself. I was painting yesterday at the farmer's market, and I was talking to myself and painting, and this man, <laughs> this man asked who I was talking to, and I said me, and, um, and, and it was funny, but I'll, I'll bet you, you know, at least you've got to be talking to yourself, at least in your head, even if it doesn't come out verbally when you're painting. Anyway, he thought I was pretty silly. I didn't argue with him. What could I say? Okay, that little dart doesn't seem like it's important now, but it will be when I put these two together. So that was nice. And then I'm going to put in a little bit of dark right here. It's kind of interesting the way the shadow did that. And I think it just has to be subtle. Otherwise, there's you know that fine line between having a nice little dark spot there and, and having it look like something's wrong with the apricot. We can't have that. Because Hollister has the best apricots in the world. Or San Benito County, how's that? OK, got to leave that alone. Go on to the next one. All right, well, what do I need to do with this side here? In order for this to really start to pop, this left side here has to be really light. So I'm going to get a clean brush, or at least one that's got only light stuff on it, and start there before I, wow, see, I've got, I've got part of that uh, brush stuck in my lip one. All right. So I'm putting I'm putting this right next to that. And as I'm doing it, I'm scrubbing out the pencil line. So I'm being a little more careful than I normally am just for this one section. And this is a hard edge. And we talked about that before, having hard and soft edges and how important that is. This is a soft edge between this little ridge here, so you get that, that, that nice little groove. This has to be hard. Next show is going to be the start of our fourth season. I can't believe this will be the start of four years. And um, it's incredible because I have some crew members that have been with me since day one. Um, and I can't do anything without the crew that I have working on this show. And Jan Janes and Bruce Lee, Larry Talbot, and Ron Winnegar have been on almost every single show that I've done. And uh, that's awesome. So we're going to have a party next time. And, and they hate to be on camera, but you know we're going to have to do something about that. They're shaking their heads now. I wish you could see them. They, they like being behind camera. But you know what? You don't do 30 some odd episodes by yourself. I've got a, an incredible crew. 
There's another guy that hates to be on camera that's helped at every single shoot, and that's Sean Mulcair. Mr. Sean is awesome. Oh, and you know, one more person. <laughs> you know the little things that lip up under your head so you can see um, when there's somebody on TV and you see their name run across the bottom of the screen or you see any graphics at all, that's called a CG person. And the gal that just flashed that up on the screen, <laughs> her name is Dee, and she's worked a ton of shoots and she rocks. So anyway, I'm, okay, I'm through. But um, I just have to tell you, these guys are awesome. Okay, we got the light here. That's nice. That's a whole mess of light, and I just like it, and I can paint in yellow. All right, so I, this is kind of a finished drawing the uh, little midsection. All right, so it kind of kind of comes down here. So this is behind this little section here, and that's a little darker right there. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna put in this light background before I do anything else because otherwise it's gonna be hard to get in there with my brush and I don't wanna contaminate that because that, that's gonna be really, that little tiny spot is gonna be really important later. So I'm gonna get some straight white. Well, maybe with just a tinge of warmth to it, just a little bit. And I'm gonna fill in this spot. Because it doesn't make sense now, but it will later that you got to have that there. And if I try to, like, fill in this hole and be careful once I have paint in other places, well, I just don't seem to be able to do that. So I know better, and I'm going to start early. Okay. Great. Now I can get off the being careful stuff and have some more fun. Oops. I got some in there. Okay. All right. Back to drawing that little section. I love the color of apricots. You know, I'm more, um, I don't, I don't eat as much as I um, love to paint fruit. I'm not a huge fruit eater. But I love apricots. They're good. And that's good. I got a good start there. Now, this particular little half of the cot doesn't have nearly the, uh, doesn't have the you know the depth of dark darkness on it, so I'm not going to make it as dark. There will be l more of a subtlety here than the other one. As I'm putting my brush down, I'm correcting my drawing. Well, maybe not correcting, just adjusting. Nah, it's correcting. <laughs> totally correcting. Okay, I'm adding a little red to that. What am I putting down here? And if you don't like the little shape that nature gave you, you can always change that. A little plastic surgery on the cut. Okay. That's a little too bright for that area. But I'll go in later with some violet and touch that up. I love organic shapes. So I, I and what I mean by that are um, as opposed to man-made geometric shapes. So I love the round shapes. Why? I don't know. I, I that's just a, a tendency. You will see certain artists tend toward either geometric or or organic. I like organic shapes. And it's not a, it could be a male-female thing. There are a lot of guys that like very hard, 
uh, man-made shapes. Uh, and there are a lot of guys that are into, uh, and they've actually done studies as far as what types of paintings that men prefer as opposed to what m women will prefer. And uh, so men tep like tend to like paintings that have, I know, okay, the, you should see the look on this one guy's face. <laughs> Men t tend to like paintings that have action or things going on in it. People doing things, um, you know, action things occurring. So something as sedentary as this might not be, although it's, it's even though it's a little precarious perch here, is, may not be as interesting to some male viewers as it is to female. I'd like to know who the people are that are doing these studies. But anyway, as far as male painters, I do see, you, you do see a lot of uh, geometric shapes. I think for me is that since I don't, in my personality doesn't like to be too careful and I don't like to stay in the lines, organic shapes for me are a little more forgiving. So I think that's why I do it. I've got to put that light in, too, on this other side before I miss that. Always have to overstate the light so that you don't lose it later. I hope you guys noticed that the old monkey's back, and that was based on the uh, volume of emails that I got and even a, f a couple phone calls about the stunt double. So he's back. He's here to stay. Oh, yeah. Well, what happened to the stunt double is the stunt double is actually taking a trip to China. And I'm not kidding. <laughs> he really is going to China to meet his new brothers and sisters. I'll keep you posted on that next time. Okay, we need a little more light here, and we're just gonna go, you know, this kind of reminds me of, uh, of maps where you can see the rings of elevation and that's how we're going to paint the rest of this apricot. It's, it's going to be, <laughs> it'll be light in the very center. Now, is this showing this in the reference photo? No. Um, but unless I do this, it's not going to look three-dimensional. Or as three-dimensional as I'd like it to. I may have to squirt some more of that out. And I'm going to grab, I'm going for some we're going to get a little bolder with this puppy and some of this Indian yellow. Whew, not that bold. That's better. Okay. And a little bit more. I'm trying to pick up the pace so that we can get this whole thing done. I'll add a little bit. There's hardly any red in this one, so we're going to have to do something about that. But first what I'm going to do is blend this, and then we'll, uh, we'll see what it needs. I need to put some, definitely need to put some more light here before I blend, because otherwise there's a spot with no paint. That wouldn't be good. So there will be nothing to blend it with. Okay, so I'm using a pretty, pretty good amount of pressure here. I'm not being shy with it. You can tell by how the canvas is popping around that I'm kind of beating on it. 
Yesterday, when I was out at the farm, when anytime you paint outside, you, you contend with the bugs, the pollen, all the flowers, and everything that's falling around. And um, I got tired of picking the bugs off the canvas, and I just blended them in with the <laughs> paint. So um, hopefully that's going to hold up over time, but that painting will have a little extra texture. Okay, I'm going to blend these little rings. Again, I'm not spending as much time on this particular section so that I can get this whole thing covered. This, this is one that I'll definitely bring back next time so you can see how I glazed and what I did to get it done. But it, but it won't be a two-parter. Okay, so I'm stepping back. It's starting, it's got a little bullseye right here. We'll have to do something about. But it's start, <laughs> starting to look a little three-dimensional. But it is time to move on to the other one. So I'm getting rid of the bullseye. Step back, look at it again, and I just killed it. So um, I cannot, <laughs> I can't let it sit like that. No, and go on to the next one. Um, we'll have to fix it, but it won't take that much. Now, what did I do to kill it? Um, I blended it. I over blended it. So all the nice little brush strokes that I did, I just wiped them away. And then I'll put some light back in there, and then I have to leave it alone. <laughs> just so hard. OK, I'm stepping back, and now we still have this little thing here. God, it is so tempting to play with this till I get it right, but I'm going to um, take my own advice. Keep going. All right, so we need to put in a pit really quick because we don't have a lot of time. So I'm going to grab some purple. Um, and I don't know, in the reference photo, it's, it's uh, kind of cockeyed, so we'll just throw in some color here. Sometimes I stand like this is, is for balance. It does help. Helps me think better. Okay, so there's there's some purple there. Where else? It's dark on this side. I'll throw in some red. More of a magenta. Oh, that's too pink. We need some serious red. Yeah, Caroline. Oh, that's pink too. I'm going to have to get the CADs out pretty quick. All right, so I'll grab the dirty brush brown that I made and then put that in the middle. So you can be, see that I'm a lot sloppier right now because I want, to get, I want to get the shadows and everything in. Okay, so there's that, and I will just add some straight CAD red light into the purple. Okay, and I have to kind of blend this. I'm touching this just lightly. And I could actually leave that spot there, but no. Need to play with it. Okay, that's all I'm going to do for the pit at this point. And I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of this in because I want to get the I want to get those shadows in because that'll help it make sense. So we have a reddish orange going on right here. This 
So you can see the very first apricot, I took my time, really worked to get the form. The second one I kind of slapped in and had to stop. And this one will be uh, even more rushed. But you'll get the idea. OK, I also need to put in this. I see areas where I need to make a map and I need to draw before I do anything else. So basically, I'm going to kind of cut this, this hair. Kind of does that. And I'll blend that away so it's not so pronounced. But I wanted to have the two halves. Yeah, that's good. And then really, what I, you know, what you can't see in the, um, in my reference photo, or what I hadn't seen, is that uh, I think it's. I'm gonna, look, I'm gonna pick this up and look at it. Actually, there's a little lip there that I didn't even see. So I'm gonna change that and draw that. That looks like it kind of goes, kind of goes like this. And does it go up to here, or does it, where does it end? It ends somewhere around the shadow. Somewhere around there. Maybe lower. That's the nice thing, is you can change this. OK. Yeah, that's good enough. All right, so now I need to throw some red on the bottom. Why? Because it's a little bit darker there. Why red? Because I like it. A little too close to that, so I'm grabbing some more Cad Yellow Deep. I need to squirt some more out here. Kids thought this was a funny colored toothpaste. I explained to them that it's not good, not good to brush your teeth with this stuff. OK. I'm going straight into the Cad. This, this particular Cad Yellow Deep, for a tiny little tube, maybe, OK, this is green. But for a tiny little tube that's this size, it's like 30, 30 bucks for one of these. It, these are really, really expensive. OK, so I'm just going to quick throw in some color here. Oh, I love that. That's just happy. I have a cheap date. Doesn't take much here. OK. And I need to put some uh, light right here next to this so that that makes sense. But basically, with about the amount of time we've got left in here, I'm just going to spend about five minutes on this, five minutes on the shadows, and we're going to be done. I'm not even going to touch the background. And actually, I would probably just do a light, mellow background. All right, so we want this to be on top, so it has to be lighter. Get that separation there. And this has to be light. And I'm going for the straight Indian yellow, because we need quick results here. That is happy next to that purple. Believe me, if it's not happy, I'd say something. Of course, the other thing is the color is so subjective, and what I think is happy may just really gross you out. But then you could paint it the way you want to. All right, we're going to slap this stuff on. Kind of like football, you get a two minute warning. So when I get a five minute warning, I got to go to the shadows. There's just no, you know, that's it. And you don't get any timeouts, you know, so you just got to do it. I'm just lucky they're not throwing penalty flags at me. Okay. What does it do when it gets closer? It's redder.
You can tell I'm really just slapping it on now. And as long as I make this darker down here, this is going to work. Got to have that little ridge. And then start slapping in the cat yellow deep. Ooh, yeah. It's a little bumpy. So I'd, I'd probably straighten out the lines later. I'm not even going to deal with it right now. That kind of goes like that. This goes like that. See what I can quickly get done here. Okay. I'm going to quickly mix a shadow color. All right, so as fast as I did this, and as squirrely as it looks, you still get an idea of what you can do in a short amount of time to get this to start to look like it's three dimensional. It is definitely more peachy than apricotty, but hey, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> All right. So let's do some shadow, and I'm, you know, let's start with the purple because it's easy, because I like it, and it's dark. And it looks good next to this. It has to look marvelous. And just going to put that down here. I'm going to make this part really dark and lighten it up later. I'm pushing the shadow colors. No, this is not the color the shadow actually looks. I don't care. I like it, and it will work. So now I'm going to mix a lighter blue-violet color for the rest of the shadow, a whole bunch of it. And that's how we're going to finish the show. Let's see if that works. Yeah. I might add some purple to it later, but, or actually I'll brush mix it. There we go. See, these things have, have to have a place to land. And I'm not leaving this little hard line here. I'm putting this shadow in. Blending it as I go. And I'm scribbling in these shadows. See, it's a good thing I took time with my time with that one little white spot there because toward the end of the show, I don't have the patience or the time to be careful. As far as the first statement, it's not bad. I will... Uh, do some glazing over the top of it to finish it off and further refine the areas. It's cool that there's a little bit of orange hair in the shadow because in the actual reference photo there is some orange hair. And I'll add the last little shadow and we'll, we'll have it done. I'm not going to bore you with the painting the background because that's going to be a fairly solid color and that would be like watching paint dry. The 
this poor old easel has the wobbles, but you know, after it's earned it, it's been all over the place. I do have a little piece that holds the canvas down, but it falls like a guillotine and uh, always scares me. <laughs> I can't have that on TV. Okay. All right, I'm touching this up. All right, so I'm starting to take take a look back. Now it's they've landed a little bit. This is a little bit too too harsh here. And I don't want it to look like it's outlined. So this is something that I would definitely play with and clean up a little bit. But really, so you can see for for a first statement, um, even though each one of these was done quicker and quicker and quicker and it appeared that it was slapped on, it still has the sense of a likeness. You still get the 3D effect. Uh, what would I do, you know, in the last minute or so to just, just maybe punch it up just a little bit more? Well, the lightest, uh, the lightest lights aren't going to work because it's too wet. So if I put something there, that's just, you know, it's just going to kind of sink into the canvas. But if I do put in some darker darks, that would help. So I'll throw in a little bit of blue, a little more violet down here, and just uh, punch up the shadow a little more. I'm not going to play around with the apricots because, you know, I'll get stuck and, you know, we don't want this to be a two-hour show. And um, there. Some more color in here. The inside of a shadow is always lighter than the outside. That's because of the reflected light. Okay, and then I need to put a little bit dark hair. Now the blue and orange are opposite on the color wheel, so that's why they're making such a nice team. Okay, well, that's it for these apricots and this version of Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'll see you next time on our new fourth season. Thanks for watching. I'm Shannon Grissom.